Well, good morning, folks. Welcome back to uh, the interior of the Cirrus again. Uh, just down here at Moorabbin Airport once again. Just doing a little bit more prep work, getting used to some of the systems in the aircraft, but also working on things like um, aspects of the filmmaking of the trip as well. So for things like this, for example, the GoPro mounts. So I've got one front facing one, which will give us some great views out the front and one side facing one. So what I need to do is test them. Let's attach some GoPros to here uh, and check out some of the angles that we can get. A couple of you have asked actually how I record the audio from air traffic control and what I'm saying in the aircraft onto the GoPros. Basically, it's pretty simple. I know a lot of people talk about external audio recorders that they use. Uh, some people record onto their iPhones. I think all these methods are great, but it's not quite for me because I think it's actually too much hassle then afterwards to try and sync the audio back to the video track when you're doing your editing. So on this um, Hero 4 Silver, I've got the... Whoa! <laughs> I've got the, um, that was the lens cap, I've got the um, GoPro audio cable and so this has the mini USB connection which goes into the side of the GoPro like this and then that has a cable which ends up in a three and a half mil jack. In the Cirrus it goes directly into the passenger headphone socket and that way then I've got the camera connected directly into the headphone socket. I can put the GoPro up here and click that in and you can see the GoPro with the cable is out of my way completely. I've also got the Hero 5 Black Now that of course takes a different input. This one has, I think this is a, a USB-C which just basically goes into the side so again you need to get the GoPro adapter which converts your three and a half mil jack into the GoPro adapter. Click that in there then this adapter goes into the GoPro itself like so. What I have on the end of this cable is this splitter. So it basically takes one quarter inch jack and splits it into two female quarter inch inputs. So I plug this quarter inch jack into my primary pilot's headphone socket and then I put the GoPro into one side and my, which I don't have it on me, but my headset jack goes into here. If you can see this one's actually on quite a long cable and this one goes behind the back of my seat, round the left hand side under the door and is affixed to the front here on a suction cup mount. That's a so remember those um, ball joints, the ball buckle joints that I wanted to get from GoPro? I didn't find them in the shops in the end so I had to order them online, um, but they work really well. So what it means is I can have this camera here but it's very easy for me to be able to turn it. And because the GoPros have got a really wild, uh, wild, <laughs> wild field of view as well as a wide field of view, and what it means is that sometimes about a third of the picture was just picking up the side of the aircraft. So being able to rotate the camera means that I can make sure that the angle is a lot better and we can focus just on the action rather than on the bits of the aircraft. Audio test. So let's turn the avionics on and just for about 30 seconds quickly, we'll just see how it sounds with the audio coming through the GoPros. I'm just gonna see how the audio sounds on this GoPro first of all. This is me talking one, two, three, four. I'm just changing the squelch, so that's squelch completely off. That's the squelch completely up. And that's the squelch about halfway through, so about a third, two thirds, somewhere in the middle. Down, that's the volume coming up to the top, and that's the volume about a third of the way through. So on this GoPro, then again I'm going to do the same. All I'm doing is just changing the volume and the squelch on the communication console here. Squelch about the middle, volume control all the way down. I can't hear anything here, volume control all the way up, which is pretty loud. So let's turn everything off again. So we'll go avionics off. And turn the two batteries off as well. So that's the audio check. I have no idea how that sounds. I'll obviously have a look when I edit this footage afterwards and see how it sounds. But I'm going to put my recommendations for what settings to use right here. 
All right, now let's have a quick look at some of the angles. So what I'll do is I'll flick to this GoPro up here. Um, what we should see is we should see a nice view of the dashboard here, dashboard across. You should be able to see the primary flight display and the multifunction display over here. So now let's take a look at the other GoPro. This is the cockpit facing GoPro. Um, so what you should be seeing hopefully is a pretty good angle from uh, about here hopefully so you shouldn't be seeing the edge of the door then you should also get a fairly good view looking out this side of the aircraft so looking out the right hand side window and yeah it just should give you a much better idea of exactly what's going on in the cockpit as well as using this camera to have a look at what's going on outside the plane too you know what, these are really robust things, these GoPros. This is the third time I've just dropped this little thing uh, in the last 10 minutes and it's still working perfectly. So thank you GoPro for making such robust products. This GoPro, this Hero 4 Silver, this has got an ND filter sitting on the front of it. I'll just take it off so you can see. There, that's the normal lens. That's the ND filter that sits on the top. And that's to help, what it does is it's basically like sunglasses for the GoPro. It uh, darkens the light that's coming in, changes the shutter speed, and it gets rid of some of that rolling shutter effect that you get with the propeller. Uh, it just makes everything look a bit more blurry and uh, yeah, it just looks better. Looks better out the front. Right, I'll try not to drop it again. When I get back home, I'll just give you a bit of an overview of some of the settings that I use for the GoPros as well. Um, just in terms of the, you know, the max ISO, shutter speeds, um, white balance. Also, whether you should use ProTune or not. I'll tell you about what I think on that. This is the Hero 5 Black, which I've been testing in the cockpit earlier. So here's the first screen that you see. This has got the key video settings across the bottom. You can see I have my resolution set to 1080p, uh, which is HD. Now you can do 2.7K and 4K on the Hero 5. To be honest, 1080p does what I need. File sizes on everything else are, are too big anyway. So next up is frames per second. I've got this set to 25 frames per second. Now, of course you can increase that uh, to 50 and even higher settings with slightly different resolution um, combinations here on the GoPro. But because I'm using this in the cockpit, not really looking to change the, the speed of the track, I'm just gonna keep it the same. Um, I may as well record at 25 frames per second because uh, otherwise the file sizes will be larger and I wanna store more on the memory card here. Now next up is the field of view. I have mine set to wide because when you're recording in the cockpit, you obviously wanna try and capture as much as you can, um, really from the left all the way through to the right hand side of the plane especially with the front facing camera because you want to be picking up what's going on right across from the primary flight display to the multifunction display maybe down here to what's happening with the navigation console and then on my protune settings now it's always the debate do you have protune turned on or off i always have protune turned on because it gives me more flexibility over some of these settings which i like to have control over i have my gopro color set to flat rather than gopro if you're not looking to do any color correction on your footage afterwards then choose the GoPro option um, it's really good the, the color is great on the GoPro option but I go for flat just because it gives me a little bit more control and I can do my own color correcting afterwards in post-production in Final Cut my white balance I set to auto I never mess with that my max ISO I set to 400 now you can increase this to a higher max ISO but to be honest I don't really like the additional noise that it will put onto the the picture otherwise so I have mine set to 400 my shutter speed this is set to 150th it's just following the basic rule in cameras which is if I'm filming at 25 frames per second then my shutter speed needs to be double that so 25 frames a second 150th for the shutter speed now your exposure compensation at certain shutter speeds you can't adjust that whenever I can I always bump that down a little bit I always rather that things are underexposed than overexposed because you can fix underexposure a lot more easily in post-production than overexposure but in this instance we can't change that so that's obviously just grayed out 
Um, sharpness, I tend to set to medium, which really suits my needs, to be honest. High is way too high, I find, on the GoPros. And low, well, you normally need to bump a little bit of sharpness in in post-production afterwards anyway. So to save myself time, I set this to medium, and I'm pretty happy with the results that come out. Audio is currently off, but there are some options there when you're using external audio, which we will be. Video stabilization, I always have that set to on. And then these options are not available for 30 frames per second or lower, and we're on 25. And the manual audio controls, I keep that automated because the input I get from the GoPro is, is really good on auto anyway. And one last thing before this trip happens, if you want to follow along, and a few people have asked about following in real time the live flight tracking of the aircraft, I'll also be live tweeting via my Twitter account, at Steph747, live tweeting a GPS tracker link that you'll be able to click on and you'll be able to in real time follow the aircraft as we're going along from leg to leg. Also remember the daily vlogs will be coming out as well so make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you get those first up. As always thank you for watching it means so much to know you're enjoying this content but give us a like if you enjoyed it otherwise I'll see you next time and yeah let's go to Longreach.